Okay, man, you both receive your instructions. Give me a clean match. Obey my commands at all times. And most importantly, protect yourself at all times. Touch them up. Good luck. So here we go with Abdukahorov against Colazzo. Now, guys, obviously, the three of us have been watching Louis Colazzo go about his business for many, many years. 39 wins into his career. 38-year-old, former WBA welterweight champion, a title he won in April of 2005. Mm. And here he is still Stop. going on it. What should we know about Abdukahorov? Abdukahorov is a pressure fighter. Doesn't always fight behind the jab. Has power in his right hand. He's gonna loop the right hand. Nice right hand by him right there. And he's a good body puncher as well. Always stable, feet are always set. And he's a switch hitter also. He can switch it on the dime. From yes. right hand to orthodox. Yeah, similar position that Louis right Colazzo has so. seen himself in, you know, for many, many years now, B-side. He told us in the fighter meeting yesterday, I, I don't even know what the A side is. And we said, well, what about when you won the championship? He said, I still wasn't the A side. I took that fight on two weeks notice. Familiar position for Colazzo. But the question is, is has he gotten old overnight? Right. And he's been older for, for some time, but has he gotten old to the point where he can't compete with this level of competition? But Dre, you know, you're saying old, you know, when you get older, you start changing some things. And, you know, speaking with him in the fighter meeting, he said that, you know, he only spars five or six rounds twice a week, you know, and then the, the hard sparring, he'll spar maybe 10 to 12 rounds, but that's occasionally. So, you know, he's training smarter now instead of harder, and I think that's going to benefit him in this fight. I like that approach. I agree with that approach as you start to age, but that has to translate into the fight. Ooh. Oh, there's a left hand that comes in from Abdukahorov. As you said, you mentioned that he will switch stances. And that's exactly what he did there, Tess. He switched stances. And Colazzo wasn't ready for that. And now a combination that includes work to the belt line from Abdukahorov. Abdukahorov is showing a little bit more wrinkles than what I saw on the video on the tape, but studying him. Going down to the body. Spinning, turning Colazzo on an angles, landing angle shots. An Uzbeki fighter who is based mm. in Malaysia, who is a world title challenge hopeful at 147 pounds. Right now he's sitting top of the IBF rankings. The BC's got him number six. He's number 11 in the WBO. Tried to catch Louis coming in with a right uppercut. Louis right now is having a hard time, Dre. He's having a hard time timing Aduka Horov. Aduka Horov is showing some footwork right now, getting out at the right time. Oh, nice shot. Nice. Feet got tangled up. Not a knockdown. You liked how Aduka Horov just reached out to touch him up and Louis didn't offer it back? Yeah. There's no love right now, Joe. Not right now. It's too early. Round one of our welterweight attraction here before we get to the light heavyweight title fight. I'm a veteran. We hit a mine in Vietnam. As America's veterans face challenges, DAV is there. My victory's been never giving up hope. DAV helps veterans of every generation get the benefits they've earned. I finally admitted, with my PTSD, I wasn't doing well. So veterans can reach victories, great and small. Now I wish I'd found DAV sooner. My victory? is just enjoying each day. Support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. A hard 20 after a hard day isn't for everyone. Got this Waking up before the sun isn't for everyone. No, Peloton isn't for everyone. But at $58 a month, don't give up. Come on. It's for anyone who wants it. Second fight in the U.S. for Abduka Horov, the 26-year-old Uzbeki fighter. He was here in Philly on March 30th, and he took on a Japanese contender named Kiiti Obara, and he won a 12-round unanimous decision there. That was when we were here to see Vozdik as well. Vozdik fought Ngumbo that night. And 
that was a fight that was cut short with an injury to Bozdik's opponent. So now here he is back in action against a bigger, more established name, at least a more familiar name compared to the Japanese opponent he fought in Colazzo. And he got the best of the 38-year-old early on. Round number two here scheduled for 10. Abdul Gohorov said he's not a big puncher and he's not known to be a big puncher, but he's landed some heavy shots in this first round and a half. Even the shots that he misses against Colazzo like that, like the one that hit the arm, you can hear the thudding punch. He has good power in that right hand. I just like the fact that he's always set the punch. He's always in a good position. I'm talking about Aduka Horov to be able to land those power shots. The time he tried to time a right hand against Colazzo. Colazzo looking to close that gap on the inside. And another right hand comes in from Aduka Horov. And then driving down with a right hand. Good exchange from both men that time against the ropes. Nice body work right there. Two punches from Colazzo. That's what he's going to have to do in order to slow the young fighter down, Abduka Horov. It's tough when you get older, Joe. You got to find another way to do it because you don't match up punch for punch, speed for speed with the younger fighters like you used to. So you take a little bit more punishment to get inside to do damage, and that's what we see Colazzo doing right now. And in doing that, Dre, Louis finding some success punching between punches. Exactly. With Abdu Kahora. But he's got to be in the lion's den and he's going to get hit in the process. As long as he's okay with that, he can get the work done like he's getting it done thus far. You got to take to give sometimes in this game. You know, going into this fight, I thought Louis Colazzo was going to be boxing. He's actually the pressure fighter in this matchup at the moment. It's a veteran in fight adjustment on the fly. And you see the mouth open of Aduka Horov. Beautiful counter by him right there. As he made Colazzo miss, he made him pay. Abduka Horov is not comfortable right now. He's allowing Colazzo to speed up his pace, which in turn is gonna, is gonna cause Abduka Horov to fade a lot quicker. Pretty good action second round here between these two. 10 seconds. Remember, Tyson Fury is gonna join us and help broadcast this fight in moments. Mike Rella is the cup man for Louis Colazza, and now he has work to do as there was an accidental clash, as referee Benji Estevez said. And there's a cut above the left eye of the veteran Colazzo. Let's check in with Bernardo. In the corner of Louis Colazzo, they're not too worried about the cut, but they do want him to be more active, and more importantly, they want him to continue to work the body of the younger fighter. Had some success moments ago doing that. Let's see if he can get back to it. Absolutely. As he sends him back off balance that time. Now tried to close the gap with a left hand to the body. Meanwhile, two punch combination to the body from Abdu Kohora. Colazzo has a cut over the left eye. Doesn't seem to be very bad right now, but that's normal practice in a Louis Colazzo fight, especially on the back end of his career with all the scar tissue that he has around both eyes. Colazzo right now is trying to force the fight out of Aduka Horov. You know, he's trying to press the gas tank. He's trying to force him back. He's trying to make him panic. He's trying to gas him out. His fight's going to take place in the second half of this fight for Colazzo. Seven times in the career of Colazzo now, he's had a cut above the eye. Four times over the right eye. Now three times over the left eye. That's what happened in the last fight as well as he gets a rise from the crowd. The adjustment that Colazzo made, Tim, is what you said earlier. He's putting pressure on the younger fighter. He's making him fight harder than he wants to fight. He's taking the shots of Abdul Kaharov, and he's landing his own shots, not only to the head, but also to the body. And right now, the young fighter is starting to slowly wilt. Being Confidently veteran. walking straight into the kitchen, too. That's right. Being a veteran fighter, you don't feel, you don't feel any power? You're going to walk through all that fire. Lands a left hand that time as he got to the inside. And a veteran tactic from Colazzo. He's not wasting any energy when he goes to Abduka Harp. He's walking to him. He's not on his toes. He's not bouncing. He's preserving his energy for the exchanges that you see along the ropes right here. And he's looking at time. Abduka Horov. Ooh, nice left hook by Abduka Horov right there. And a nice exit. 
But Salazzo don't seem phased at all. He's willing to go through fire because he told us that he wants to be champion again. Duko Horoff is the number one contender for the IBF. A win here will give him his place to possibly fight for the IBF Championship of the World. Duko Horoff has a clash of heads that time as well, but it didn't make contact with that left eye. And it didn't detour Colazzo and Ajo. No. Duko Horoff and Colazzo, end of three. You watching for the Jays? Or are you watching for these Jays? You watching for the dynamic duos? Or are you watching for the MVPs? Celtics, Sixers, Nuggets, Blazers. Wednesday on ESPN. Ball for all. Shishito, burrito, raw kifo. Fry shiso. French fry, iced chai, pad thai, baked pie, half stack, mm. taco pack, lobster mac, baby back, pork chop, soda pop, kebab, sour chop, hot pot, hungry now. Noodle soup, cantaloupe, ice cream scoop, whipped cream, blue dumpling, chicken wing, beef king, and those crispy onion rings. We are America's Kitchen, DoorDash, every flavor welcome. Alexander Vostik and the Hall of Fame trainer Teddy Atlas. Final moments before they have the unification bout against Arthur Better BF, the 14 and 0 IBF light heavyweight champion, 14 knockouts. So you think about these two guys getting together at this stage of their career, and you see there 31 combined fights. They are wasting no time in their careers of saying, let's get after it, let's do this. They're primed, they're ready, they had long amateur careers, and in their early 30s, why not? So that is coming up in moments. The WBC, IBF, and lineal light heavyweight world championship fight should be spectacular. Round number four of a fight that just took a turn with the veteran Louis Colazzo figuring things out against Abduka Horov, walking straight through into the pocket and able to apply pressure after a first round when Abdu Horov landed a good left hand switching stances and Louis had a little bit of trouble. And Tess, Abdu Horov landed a right hand at the beginning of the round that buzzed Colazzo, got his attention. Abdu Horov has landed 59 punches to Colazzo's 37. One of the areas where I don't see Aduka Horov throwing is the body. If you want to slow down Palazzo and keep a fighter off of you, you have to dig down to the body of your opponent to slow him down. That's not his game, Tim. He wasn't taught like that. We haven't seen that in any of his previous fights, and there's nothing that leads me to believe that he's going to start hitting to the body tonight. Well, in the fighter meeting, he told us that the body was the most important thing in this fight. Why is he not throwing down there? Why is he not throwing down there? <laughs> It's not his comfort zone. He likes you outside. He wants comfort. And that's what I don't like about what Abdul Kahorov is doing right now. He's allowing the veteran fighters to dictate. When Kalazo wants to rest, he's allowed to rest. When he wants to fight, Abdul Kahorov engages. Abdul Kahorov needs to step to Kalazo and make the older fighter fight faster than he wants to fight. I see Abdul Kahorov very reactive and not proactive thus far. And Colazzo knows that too. Colazzo looking like he's looking to line him up for a big shot. He misses wildly right there with a big left, round left hand. Two deliver of the right hand. And now Louis comes right back at him. Trying to work behind that jack. Couldn't send the left hand with it. High above the Leah Chorus Center here in Philly. Well, look at who's having fun sitting ringside as he's up there in the jumbo. That is the lineal heavyweight champion of the world. Tyson Fury, and it's tough to turn on any network or sports entertainment right now and not see 
Tyson Fury as he has made his splash in pro wrestling and of course the king of the heavyweights as the lineal champion interesting times his American takeover continues that he's here to see the light heavyweight unification bout for now round number five of our co-feature between Kudratulo Abdukahorov and Louis Colazzo, the 38 year old veteran. Yeah, Louis, Louis Colazzo is just trying to get close. He's not coming behind the jab, so occasionally Aduka Horov is landing some combinations out at distance and scoring. There and he drives a right hand down that time. Short right hand, too, from Aduka Horov. Well, the way Colazzo has gone about finding success, as you noted, Dre, also is a taxing approach to it. Yes. And it take a lot. And yes. if you start to age, you can't keep that no. up. No, you can't keep that up. You fight in spurts. And that style demands you don't fight in spurts. Right. You can hit cleanly with right hands. Yes, he is. Combinations. It's a very good start to this fifth round for Abduka Horov. And Colazzo will do the veteran thing. He'll skip to Abduka Horov. Right. His body language will, will speak to us and tell us that it wasn't that big of a deal. He's also trying to sell something to the judges, but the reality is that Abduka Horov is doing good work right now, and Colazzo has no answers. Abduka Horov 16 and 0 with nine knockouts. He was born and raised in Uzbekistan. He grew up on a farm. The only boxer in his family he said listen i didn't have the big government supported amateur program the ability to have that launching pad to the olympics he said every day i had to wake up in the morning and pick strawberries and potatoes and herd cows and sheep. makes you hungry in life <laughs> it absolutely not that kind well, of hungry. it gives you drive he's fighting life, like it I, <laughs> he's fighting like it he's finding his spots even though Colazzo's putting on a lot of pressure duka horoff is letting those hands go and he's winning this round, to me, in my opinion. We hear the chant of supports of Louis. Louis, not far away from his home in Queens, New York, just up the road. Palazzo just seems just a step behind. He's just a little step behind. Is that the old age you're talking about, Trey? Yeah, he's a, he's a few steps mm -hmm. behind. And, and that's okay because he's found a way around that. The only problem with that is you're running to somebody one night and you won't be able to get around it like you have been previously. And it looks like that's the case, at least thus far tonight. Well, early on, we noted the good work from Abduka Horov as he switched stances and was able to land that left hand. In the opening round, this is where he had success. Colazzo would come back in the second round and really punch between punches and move forward against Abduka Horov. There was an accidental clash of heads that opened up a cut above the left eye. What is your takeaway to this point, Tim? Right now, it just seems like Colazzo is kind of withering away. You know, uh, I would say the earlier rounds, he really, you know, poured on a lot of punches, going down to the body of Abduka Horov, but now kind of gassing out, and Abduka Horov is maintaining, as as staying focused, himself. using good movement, throwing his combinations, and doing what he has to do to win these rounds. We're going to be moving over to ESPN for continued coverage, leading right up to our light heavyweight world title fight. We welcome you to Philadelphia, everybody. Joe Tessitore and the guys here for Top Rank Boxing on ESPN. We are in the midst of our welterweight co-feature bout, including the 16-0 Kudratulo Abduka Horov against the former champion, now at 38 years old, Louis Colazzo still going at it trying to climb the mountain again but what this night is all about is what is set to come and that is boxing rarity as we have 
a unification fight between two undefeated light heavyweights. The first time in boxing history that two undefeated light heavyweight world champions will unify their title. That is Alexander Vozdik and Arthur Betterbeev set to come your way. And we have celebrities ringside. In fact, the lineal heavyweight champion Tyson Fury is set to join us in a moment to help with this fight. He'll be our guest commentator in the next round just moments away. Timothy Bradley and Andre Ward ringside with me. Colazzo, we have seen plenty through the years from first winning a title in April of 2005. Abduk Horov comes in 16-0, nine knockouts, got off to a good start in the first round before the veteran found the key a bit. Yeah, but uh, Duka Horoff is having his way right now. And, you know, going into this fight, I didn't expect this. I thought that Colazzo will be the boxer. You know, he can box very well. He's a smart fighter. But right now, he's just walking forward, hands down, not coming behind his jab, not digging down to the body of a Duka Horoff, and taking punishment. Yeah, fights are not just about who had the best training camp, who's better on paper, who has the most skill. It's about adjustments. Colazzo made an adjustment early in this fight by putting pressure on Abduka Horoff, and Abduka Horoff made another adjustment. Colazzo was yet to make the next adjustment to keep up with Abduka Horoff. So Abduka Horoff is in the lead. He's boxing well, and he's settled down. I didn't expect this, Dre. I did not expect this at all. Well, you but know this Duke can Hall happen. Be boxing. This no, can happen be boxing on any like given this. night when you have a lot of miles on your odometer. We love Colazzo. We we covered a lot of his fights for many many years. But age loses to no man, and Colazzo is up there in age. He put on a great fight six months ago in his last fight, but tonight he's looking his age. Yeah, and with that, and things start to go a little bit. We're understanding that he's dealing with an injury to his left bicep here. We'll get an update on that in moments. Going to take a quick break. Tyson Fury joins us when we come back as Sports Center will be on ESPN News for you. We welcome you to Philadelphia, everybody. Joe Tessitore and the guys here for Top Rank Boxing on ESPN. We are in the midst of our welterweight co-feature bout, including the 16-0 Kudratulo Abduka Horov against the former champion, now at 38 years old, Louis Colazzo, still going at it, trying to climb the mountain again. But what this night is all about is what is set to come, and that is boxing rarity, as we have a unification fight between two undefeated light heavyweights. The first time in boxing history that two undefeated light heavyweight world champions will unify their title. That is Alexander Vozdik and Arthur Betterbeev set to come your way. And we have celebrities ringside. In fact, the lineal heavyweight champion Tyson Fury is set to join us in a moment to help with this fight. I'll be our guest commentator in the next round just moments away. Timothy Bradley and Andre Ward ringside with me. Colazzo, we have seen plenty through the years from first winning a title in April of 2005. Abduka Horov comes in 16-0, nine knockouts, got off to a good start in the first round before the veteran found the key a bit. Yeah, but uh, Duka Horov is having his way right now. And you know, going into this fight, I didn't expect this. I thought that Colazzo would be the boxer. You know, he can box very well. He's a smart fighter. But right now, he's just walking forward, hands down, not coming behind his jab, not digging down to the body of a Duka Horov, and taking punishment. Yeah, fights are not just about who had the best training camp, who's better on paper, who has the most skill. It's about adjustments. Colazzo made an adjustment early in this fight by putting pressure on Abduka Horov, and Abduka Horov made another adjustment. Colazzo was yet to make the next adjustment to keep up with Abduka Horov. So Abduka Horov is in the lead. He's boxing well, and he's settled down. I didn't expect this, Dre. I did not expect this at all. Well, you but know this Abduka can Horov happen. Be boxing. This no, can no, happen on any like given this. night when you have a lot of miles on your odometer. We love Colazzo. We, we covered a lot of his fights for many, many years. But age loses to no man, and Colazzo is up there in age. He put on a great fight six months ago in his last fight, but tonight he's looking his age. Yeah, and with that, and things start to go a little bit, we're understanding that he's dealing with an injury to his left bicep here. We'll get an update on that in moments. Going to take a quick break. Tyson Fury joins us when we come back, as Sports Center will be on ESPN News for you. Today's best best starting. What does that mean? At today's Best Western, stay two nights and get a free night at over 4,200 hotels worldwide.
Book now at bestwestern.com. Boost Mobile has a super reliable, super fast network, so you can stay connected almost anywhere. Like up here at Lookout Point. But there's more. Now all four of us get unlimited data, talk, and text for just $25 per line per month. Hashtag first date. He ain't family yet. But there's more. We got four LG Stylify phones for free. Now the whole family can stay connected. Not disconnected. Switch to Boost Mobile and get four lines with unlimited gigs for $25 per line per month. Plus four free LG Stylify phones. All on our super reliable, super fast nationwide network. <laughs> Well, look who shows up. You really can't turn on a TV nowadays without seeing Tyson Fury. What's up, champ? What's up, Joe? Lineal heavyweight champion of the world joining us here at ringside as we get set for what's going to be a spectacular main event coming up. The Unified Light Heavyweight World Championship and the Lineal Light Heavyweight World Championship. The man who beat the man who beat the man. You're familiar with that. Help us out here, round number seven, as we take a look at the former champ, Louis Colazzo, who is dealing with a bit of pain and strain with that left bicep against Abduko Horov, the 26-year-old 16-0 fighter from Uzbekistan. Good to have you with us. Thank you very much, Joe. Yeah, from what I've seen from ringside, uh, Abduko started very strong, um, and Colazzo took a lot of his uh, pressure early on. Um, Colazzo came back into the fight quite a bit, and I think now he's starting to ease back himself a bit, slipping the shots and not countering. But all action fight, great to watch. It is, we've had good action to this point. Abduko Horov right now has landed 118 total punches to Colazzo's 72, and this is where Colazzo really needs to do his work on the inside, as he's been trying to pressure, and at times, Abduko Horov's been able to pick him off. Yeah, the Duke of Horror right now on his heels right now. Colazzo is lining him up with some big shots. Beautiful right hook right there to the head and body from Colazzo. There he is again, digging right in between the punches of a Duke of Horror. And what we're seeing from Colazzo right now, he, he's not being able to, you know, not being able to keep up with Abduka Horov. It's not a will thing or a desire thing. You got to give the old man credit. He's, he's in the face of the younger fighter. He's taking the shots well. He's just not able to keep up with the younger fighter. And he's really not able, seemingly, to put much behind that left hand. Remember, he was dealing with cramping and a bicep injury to that left hand. So you see him fire off with that southpaw right hook and try to come straight with the jab. But you're just seeing him play around with the left hand. He's going for long spurts here without really purpose with that left hand. That's right, yeah. He seemed to have damaged that right uh, bicep, I think, by the looks of things. But he's still throwing quite a few punches either, either way. By the way, in, in talking about fighters fighting through adversity, on behalf of everybody on this crew, thank you an incredible performance that you put on in September. Uh, the cut looks like it's healing fine. We'll talk about that in a moment. But what you did against Otto Holy, knowing the gash and the amount of blood and just saying, hey, listen, this is what the business is. I'm going through and I'm going to find a way. Uh, you always marvel when fighters have to overcome adversity. And that is what we're seeing here with Colazzo here, deep in round number seven. We call that thugging it out. Tess, that's how he got to do. He has to thug it out. And I'm talking about Louis Colazzo. He got to keep, he got to go through, walk through fire to get what he wants. He wants a shot at the championship. He has to beat the man in front of him right now. Just working with that right hand primarily. That's a throwaway left hand. There's just not much behind that. I'd like to see him work the body more. He seems to have a lot of success when he goes down to the body. I think you can hit this guy. I do come with everything to the chin. He's just going to take it. Beautiful right hand by Duke of Horror. Well, let's take you back to what happened in Las Vegas in September with the Lineal Heavyweight Championship on the line as Tyson Fury was taking on the undefeated Otto Valin. And you had great respect for Otto coming in. And we found out this guy really came to fight. And when he landed that left hand there, instantly, here comes the blood. What was going through your mind, Tyson? You know, it's the fight game. You can't go swimming and not get wet. But look at that. Wow. That was everything that I wanted. I that said, was everything you wanted. I said in the fighting meetings, I wanted to get caught. I wanted a tough fight for Mexican Independence Day. And it was everything I wanted. Blood, snot, and tears all over the ring. I don't know, let me see this cut, man. It still look a little tender, man. Are you gonna be ready? Are you gonna be ready? It's only been four weeks, but I think in another few months it's gonna be good. Tyson, I, I think you're making him extremely nervous with this death to death yeah. stuff. He's talking about it all the time. I told him it's okay, it'll be fine. He ain't trying to hear that. You never know what happens in WWE. I, exactly. I see it's a dangerous thing. Swelling everywhere and stuff by that eye, man. Have I took nervous? a couple of elbows already and a couple of headbutts. And it's all right. It seems to be okay. Yeah. 
All right, round number eight here with Abduko Horov and Kolatso, but to continue that conversation, so here's America sitting back on a Friday night, just relaxing, getting ready to start the evening, a lovely family entertainment of watching what was going on with the WWE. I get a text or two saying, oh, did you just see Tyson Fury? He's ringside with his beautiful family in Paris and the kids. It's nice to see you as a dad out there, just taking him to a nice event yeah. in LA. The next thing I know, there's Braun Strowman, who's really not a man, he's a monster among men, as we all know. He and he's, he's bumping you. I mean, he's throwing people into you, and you decide, I mean, what's going through your mind? You're sitting there, you say, oh, no, I'm going to come over the top of the railing and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Braun Strowman? You know, I was sat ringside with my family, he was there to enjoy the event. Braun Strowman came over to me, tried to humiliate me in front of the full crowd at uh, Staples Center. I thought about it for a second, my wife saw what was going through my mind, she said, stop, I, don't I, do I, anything. I, 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 well, all of a sudden, I thought, I'm over this barrier. Let me tell you, you can sell as good as anybody can. You're a master on the mic, you took the bump incredibly well, and then we've been seeing you show up day after day after day, making the rounds of WWE every other time, doing all the studio shows, and there you and Braun are going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Do you ever worry that he takes it too far, that an elbow comes in, that the cut opens up, that something goes crazy here with the cut, and then all of a sudden the rematch with Wild is thrown off? Well, when he does that, I'll let a haymaker go straight for the temple. <laughs> And you know, this is the fight game. People say to me, what about this cut? Well, you know, 47 stitches. When I fight Wilder, if he cuts, he cuts. I'm not gonna quit. You know, a bit of blood, whatever it is, the gash, the fight will continue. Well, you showed us that. You're, not, you're telling me you're gonna go there to Saudi Arabia. You're gonna take part in this mega global event yeah. over in Saudi Arabia against Braun Strowman. And you, you're not gonna worry about the, the eye at all? You're just gonna let it go? I you're gonna be flying around the I'm ring not, off the top rope, taking elbows, drop right, kicks, and let it go, right, and not worrying about the right, other. That's right, I'm not a warrior. You know what I'm I want to put you in bubble wrap. I want you in bubble wrap. If it happens in Saudi Arabia, it happens in Las Vegas, what the heck? It's a cut. It's not the end of the world. Many fighters have been caught and can't carried on. Well, Tyson, There's Kalaza coming. I'm curious to know what's harder, WWE or boxing? To be fair, the WWE. The commitment, the travel is very, very hard. Okay. Six days a week on the road, it's very, very hard. But the boxing, probably the toughest one-on-one -on -one combat in the world. Now, as you pro, I mean, that, that scene of what you did in September to see your face, it was as if a paintbrush came down your face there, coating it in blood every single round for you to go on Ten and do seconds. what you did to Otto Berlin. It was an impressive performance. But we know why you're here as we come to the end of round number eight with Colazzo and Abduka Horeb. Everybody has come out from you. Vasily Lomachenko is sitting ringside. Top 10 fighters everywhere because we have a boxing rarity, and that is two undefeated world champions willing to face each other. As you see, Alexander Bozdik making his final preparations. And then this human wrecking ball of Archer Better BF, who's 14 0 with 14 knockouts. This is good for the sport. This is what should happen, Tyson. Very much so. You've got two of the best light heavyweights in the world going out it toe to toe, El Mono, El Mono, both from Eastern Bloc countries. One's a big puncher, one's a big puncher, and can box. And then think about what is at stake. Obviously, you're going to be sitting on top of the world of the light heavyweight division. You're grabbing two belts as well as the lineal championship. But in the sport right now, we have 56 total champions, only six of them are multi-belt champions. So the sport gets its seventh multi-belt champion tonight, and it would be the lineal light heavyweight champion of the world. Vozdik and Better BF moments away. Let's check in with Bernardo. Got the performance here from Louis Calazzo. Willie Vargas was telling me, look, he's been fighting with one hand since the fifth round, but he says, I've got this. I know what I gotta do. I gotta throw the right, I gotta go to the body. Just a real veteran in there doing what he has to do. Yeah, one arm bandit right now is Louis Colazzo as he got the cramping in the left bicep in round number five, and he's been just throwing that right hand ever since here against the undefeated Abdu Horov. Remember, Abdu Horov has worked his way up the rankings at 147 pounds. The IBF has him number one. The BC's got him number six, just outside the top ten in WBO. But here is Colazzo at 38 years old. He came off a really good looking and exciting win against Sammy Vargas, and he's trying to impress again tonight here on national TV. You know, you really got to give this old guy credit. He's 40 years old. This guy's 26. 
it's absolute inspiration to see guys at his age still fighting in the fight game and doing very well against young up and comers and ambitious guys ranked in the top 10. And he's coming up short tonight, at least thus far. There's a round and a half left, but even in his last fight, he fought a younger guy, he outfought the guy, outboxed the guy, and he was in this fight in the early part. You gotta respect him, like like Fury just said, uh, to be able to have the wits and you know just the wherewithal, the toughness to be able to walk through the punches of a younger guy like this and to still be coming. Colazzo is pressing this fight right now, even though he's not winning the fight. Yeah, he's pressing the fight, Dre. But he's also taking a lot of punishment that on the way is. in. That he is. Andre Ward, Tim Bradley, Joe Tessitore here, joined by the lineal heavyweight champion of the world, Tyson Fury. Tyson, you know, I can't help but sit here when I'm with you now, and I look at the global sensation and marketing dynamo that you've become. Sitting on top of the world here, you get, you're a WWE superstar with a mega global event coming up in Saudi Arabia. You've got the well-reported February rematch with Deontay Wilder. We're going to need multiple Brinks trucks to bring the millions of dollars to you that you're going to earn from that. But to think where you were in your life just a year ago, coming off two shake-off-the-rust kind of fights, not knowing what the future had, the Deontay Wilder first fight where you, you even had your family members saying, why would you take that? We're worried about you. Do you ever just pause and reflect and sit back and think about where you are right now? Yeah, you know, I was only just thinking about this today. What a difference a year can make. Like you say, only a year ago I was in such a terrible place, so heavy, so out of shape, mentally unwell. I didn't really know where I was going to go. And if I look at myself today, I've had two great wins in Las Vegas. Two great wins in Las Vegas. Yeah, uh, back ranked at number one against, in Ring Magazine. Against tight relatable guys that'll serve you well come this winter 100 percent. i got a good 12 rounds in going into the wild to fight in february well you got business to take care of against braun Strowman. that's going to be fun we thank you for visiting enjoy the big thank fight coming much. up tyson Appreciate fury that. god bless oh boy we're the 10th and final round between Abduka Horov and Louis Colazzo. And Louis Colazzo's trainer, Willie Vargas, just said to him before he got off the stool to go out for this 10th round, at 38 years old, he turns to his charge and said, who wants to be the world champ? And they've been massaging that left arm since the fifth round on. There are the total punches thrown and connected. Look at the punch totals that you see there. Colazzo probably more effective work, but... Abdul Korov has had his moments, but what a gutty performance by the veteran at 38 years old to fight basically without the use of his left hand for half of this fight. Yeah, much respect to Colazzo again. I can't, I can't say it enough. Uh, an elder statesman in this game, someone we've looked up to, someone we've watched for many, many years, have a lot of respect for. And he's coming up short tonight. Good right hook right there from Colazzo. He threw the hurt left hand right there. This is when it gets tough test because you have a gritty fighter like this in Colazzo who takes the punishment he hasn't gone down he hasn't been visibly hurt but this is when you start to worry about him long term if he continues to fight I love Colazzo um, I don't want to see him continue on too much longer if at all I don't think it's necessary great career he has you know a voice in his community man train the young kids enjoy your family and try to kick your feet up man 88 to 83 on Dre's scorecard for the undefeated fighter who is from Uzbekistan, but is based out of Malaysia now, Dukohora. He just eating leather. That's all I'm seeing. Galazzo just trying to get close, trying to break him down to the body. And he's taking a lot of damage on the way in from a Dukohora. Hard not to, considering the circumstances he's Ooh, been dealing with on the head, but. from the middle of this fight onward. There was a clash of heads earlier that opened up a bad cut, and now you see blood streaming from the right eye. I mean, badly streaming from the right eye. This is a huge gash that has been opened up on the eye of Louis Colazzo. In fact, the clash was so hard that he's struggling to get to his feet. I'm gonna have the doctor look at you, okay? Wow. He's Stay off right balance right from the clash of heads, not a punch. And Dr. George Stolsteimer comes into the ring, part of the yes Philadelphia no. Commission. Okay. That's not a hard decision, man. No sense in this fight there. No, exactly. They collided and Dr. Heads. Mark Yurk oh, joins him on the apron. Not, we go no way you knock him out. He cannot go see. Score, okay. score, score the round. That was a huge hit, but... You just Please, heard George Stolsteimer say there's no way he can score continue and see. And if you look at that lid just underneath the brow, you will see a crescent-shaped gash that is going to make this fight 
come to an end right here. Now, they will score. They will partially score the 10th round. But watch this clash of heads. Here's Luz Colazzo getting a little bit off balance right there. And you see a Duka Horov okay. tries to throw a right hook. Comes in with his head. It's just incidental. Okay, it is what we Tim. got. It's it was incidental. incidental. It was. Right 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 just unfortunate for the fight to end like points, that. Okay? And then also he's dealing with the... The bicep as well. You know, a lot to deal with. These are the things that start to add up when you're an older fighter fighting in a professional prize fight. Talk about earning your pay in a tough hurt game. The hurt business. Without his left arm, a cut on the left eye, and then a brutal, I mean brutal gash on the right eye. Says this is why I say boxing is the ultimate, ultimate gladiator sport because we don't get to go back in the locker room and get any injections or get any kind of stitches in the eye. We have to continue and go through pain and injury to continue to win our fights. So they are dealing with both cuts on Louis Colazzo, but it's that cut above the right eye. I mean, can you imagine? the pain to have that adrenaline and that pressure put just above the lid with that kind of a gash. We were just visiting with Tyson Fury, a guy who survived one of those and fought on against Otto Valim. But that is why we come to an end of this welterweight fight, which means that the light heavyweight world championship unification bout is coming up next. We will get the scores here in Philly with the undefeated Abduka Horov against Louis Colazzo. Guys, before we get to that, obviously spending a lot of time in discussing things going on with Colazzo. Just your quick takeaway on Abduka Horov. I like him. I think he still needs to get polished and get and get more seasoning. I was worried about him early in this fight, but he settled down, he made the adjustments, and I like what I saw. He finished the fight strong, and I think he won the fight going away. Listen, he fought a completely different fight than I saw watching him, watching him on tape. Yes, he, he was a pressure fighter. <laughs> he showed that he can actually box. I can't believe it. And he outboxed Louis Colazzo. Let's go up to the ring to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of two minutes, three seconds in round number 10. Our, ref our referee in charge stops the contest upon advice of the ringside position as Luis Colasso, the recipient of an unintentional headbutt and deemed unable to continue by our ringside position. At these 10 rounds of boxing, we have the following scores. Dewey La Rosa scores about 99 to 91. Steve Weisfeld scores at 97, 93. And James Kenny scores about 98 to 92. All three in favor of the technical decision. Winner by unanimous decision. And still undefeated, Kudra Tulo, the punisher of Nukahoro. 17-0 now is the Uzbeki fighter of Duka Horov as Louis Colazzo, here he is at 38 years old, it's been a sensational run in terms of just being able to still do it at this age, but that was a damaging.